hi guys welcome to my ophthalmology tutorial and today we'll be talking about the structure of the eye starting with the cornea shaded in red at the front of the eye so starting from superficial to deep or inside to outside the cornea has five layers So these are the five layers of the cornea, starting with the epithelium, most, most superficially, basement membrane, the stroma, decemence membrane, and the endothelium. There's not a lot to mention about these two. Apart from that, the basement membrane contains the Bowman's capsule. Easy to remember as both start with a B while the stroma is the thickest component of the epithelium accounting for 90% the thickest component of the cornea sorry accounting for 90% of the corneal thickness so I've just quickly pasted copied and pasted a picture which I have here just to demonstrate the epithelium of the cornea in more detail so this region here is the limbus while well, everything else in the middle of the cornea is known as the central cornea so the central cornea this contains non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium while the limbus which is that circular ring around the central cornea contains stem cells these are not fully differentiated yet, but they will differentiate into the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Now second from last is the d summits membrane. Two zones are recognized in the d summits membrane. There's the anterior banded zone and the posterior unbanded zone. The anterior banded zone is present at birth so it's also known as the fetal zone so lastly it is the deepest layer the endothelium this is a single layer of cells or a mono layer and has an important role in maintaining clarity of our vision It does this by a process known as active detergence. And simply put, this is the active transport of sodium from the cornea back into the anterior chamber. And when you actively transport sodium back into the anterior chamber, water automatically fo follows it via the process of osmosis.
So now we're going to talk about the structures of the uveal tract. And it's these three structures here. So this is the choroid. This is the ciliary body. And this is the iris. So starting off with the iris, which is again part of the uveal tract. So put one there for iris. This is the colored part of the eye. And this is due to melanin. Controlled, so our eye color determined by genetics from our mothers and fathers. People with brown eyes, sorry, people with brown eyes have the most melanin. Now, onto a more important function of the iris. This got to do with his muscles. So it is the sphincter muscles and the dilator muscles. So the sphincter muscles are controlled by the short ciliary nerves. And the situation in which this could be activated would be if you shine a torch in someone's eyes. This is under the control of the parasympathetic nervous system. And the end result is pupillary constriction. So the short ciliary nerves under the control of the parasympathetic nervous system. Now onto the other side. The dilator muscles are under the control of the long ciliary nerves. And the situation in which this could be activated is if you're walking in town and you see a dragon, your eyes are going to dilate and this is under the control of the sympathetic nervous system. And the end result is pupillary dilation and this is the three D's it's a small rule I like to use to help me remember so you got the first D for dilator muscles second D for dragon and the third D for pupillary dilation and this is under the fight but this is part of the fight or flight response. Either way, your eyes will need to dilate. If you fight, you're gonna to need to see the dragon. And if you run, you're gonna to need to see where the dragon is and run away from it. So pupillary dilation. Also part of the uveal tract. is the ciliary body. I'll write it in the middle as there's two parts to the ciliary body. On this side is the muscle. So the ciliary muscle and on this side 
is the ciliary epithelium. Both the muscle and the epithelium are involved in the production of aqueous. Whereas the epithelium is involved in the secretion of aqueous. And the muscle is involved in the accommodation reflex. So the ciliary muscle is attached to the lens this is via the zonules or the zonular fibers and the contraction of the ciliary muscle leads to a change in the shape of the lens and this is the accommodation reflex so just to demonstrate the processes I've just been talking about on this image I've colored the ciliary body here in brown and on this side as well and you can see these black strands here these are the zonular fibers there so when contraction of the ciliary muscle happens it pulls on these zonular fibers changing the shape of the lens which, where my mouse is hovering here and this is the accommodation reflex which is just used to focus on near objects the last part of this video just focus quickly on the choroid again part of the uveal tract its anterior surface is in contact with the posterior surface of the retina The choroid contains small capillaries, so it is a vascular structure and gives nutrition and oxygen to the posterior surface of the retina. Thank you very much for watching the first part of this video. Please uh, watch the second part, like both, comment on both, and also let me know how I can improve these videos. Thank you very much.